Welcome back. Now, Kaylee's going to do a story mm -hmm. that reminds me of one of my favorite 1950s songs. Poison Ivy, Poison Ivy. Take it away, Kaylee. Yeah. Sounds like a beautiful song. Thank you for that <laughs> intro. Uh, hiking, gardening, and yard projects are a great way to enjoy the fresh air while practicing that social distancing. But it's important to know about plants like poison ivy, oak, and sumac that can be harmful if you come in contact with them. I sat down with Minute Clinic nurse practitioner Sarah Conley to get the scoop on the five steps for relief from these poisonous plants. Poison ivy, oak, and sumac can be an outdoor nuisance. But with these next steps, you no longer have to fear the foliage. The oil, um, known as uretriol, that is what causes the problem on the skin. So that oil comes into contact with your skin and causes the allergic outbreak. To prevent an allergic reaction, step one is to carefully turn your clothes inside out to avoid any contaminated fabric surfaces touching your skin. The most important thing is how you take your clothes off. That's the first mistake we see in clinic is, you know, I'll ask somebody, how do you take, how did you remove your clothing? It's completely wrong. Urushiol does have the ability to penetrate the fabric of your clothes, but it's still wise to wear clothing that keeps you fully covered head to toe, including non-porous gloves when coming in close contact with the poisonous plants. But even our furry friends can spread it. It can get on their fur and come into contact with you. So it's the oil that you need to watch out for and be conscientious about when you're removing your clothing. Controlling the oil is the next step. There's a few ways to remove it. The most common way is using rubbing alcohol. So just lightly take the rubbing alcohol and remove it. You can also use a degreasing soap, such as Dawn. A degreasing soap also works great to get poison ivy off of pets, but it's the way you wash that will help or hurt you. The most important thing when you remove it is you want to make sure you don't continue to rub it. That can cause it to be worse. So just a light rinse is what you want to do to get that oil off your body. It generally takes four hours to four days for poison ivy to show up on skin, and the rash and itching can last up to three weeks. But getting a visible rash varies from person to person. Everyone's different. So, for example, I'm not allergic to poison ivy. I can be around it, and I'm not allergic to it. My sister, on the other hand, if she comes five feet near it, it she's covered. So that's the difference. So basically, to answer your question, it depends on if you're allergic to it or not. If you're not allergic to it, you're not going to notice it. It's going to go away. If you are, you're going to break out within four hours to four days is that length of time that you will notice that rash. And it just depends on how allergic you are, how much is on you, and you know the time frame of when it's going to show up on your skin if you are allergic to it. Not everybody is. It's estimated that 85% of the population is allergic, though, with kids having the highest vulnerability. Statistically, as far as uh, the allergic reactions to the plant dermatitis, children are most affected. So 70 to 90 percent of kids that come into contact with the plant dermatitis will, or the plant will get some form of dermatitis. Adults, it varies. Um, so for example, if you weren't allergic as a kid, you could become allergic as, as an adult. I've had patients say, I played in the woods for years and as a kid and I never had it. I went hiking today and here I am. I'm covered in poison ivy. And so it, it yeah, it, it varies. But Statistically, kids are the most affected by it, which is that 70 to 90 percent. You'll know if you've brushed up against a poisonous plant if your rash is in a linear pattern, blistering red and itchy. And then check your history. Were you outside? What were you doing? Step four is all about treatment, which typically includes medicine you already have at home. Allergy medication, hydrocortisone creams, those are the two most common things you can treat it with. They even make some specialized poison ivy soaks, known as Dumbro soaks you can use, but that's, you can get those at CVS if you'd like to. Homeopathic methods of treatment can also work. Some people even use milk washes, so they'll take milk and soak it. I've heard of patients telling me they do that, and, it, and they'll soak it in milk in a washcloth, put it on them, and that kind of helps soothe the area too. Most planned dermatitis can be managed at home, but there are times where you just need something more potent to clear up the rashes. This is when you've reached step five and need to seek medical treatment. One, if it's greater than 20% of your body, so it continues to spread or it continues, you wake up and it's all over your body, that would be a reason to seek medical treatment. Two, if it's on your face, any part of your face. Three, if it's on your groin. And then four, if you feel like it's infected. So if you feel like you need an antibiotic, it's infected because that can happen too. 
it can open, especially with immunocompromised patients, such as a diabetic patient, it can become infected. And that's a huge problem for them because they have a hard time healing anyway. Again, the best thing to do is rinse and shower right away. And the leaves are not the only thing to be cautious of. Poison ivy, oak, and sumac all contain that urushiol in the stems, in the leaves, in the vines, in the whole entire plant. Guys. Okay, good to know. Yes, we got a viewer comment saying, you know, the spores can travel in the wind. That's how you can walk That's by and get it. Good to know. If you're susceptible. So, all right. Coming up, we're having some French toast <laughs> right after this. I'm a, yeah.